Hi, I'm Tracy Johnson from Cheese Needs and lead admin at Learn to Make Cheese, the largest group for cheesemakers on Facebook. And welcome to This Week in Cheese. First up, it's a top tip. I posed a question in Learn to Make Cheese. What is the room temperature of your kitchen right now, this time of year, end of November? What is room temperature? Most of the recipes that I could find when I was new to cheese said you should air dry your cheese at room temperature for two to four days before you proceed with aging. But what is room temperature? Well, I asked the question and 137 people responded. The majority of them, the vast majority of them are in the 20 to 21 C range. But some people said that their kitchen went down to like four degrees C and some people it went up to 36 degrees C. So this is why we now recommend cave drying all cheeses unless there's a specific warm phase requested in the recipe like you would get with an Asiago or with a brie and a cam for them to grow their initial molds. So no more air drying, it's now cave drying. Now it's time for a serving suggestion. Wine marinated feta. Before you add any herbs and spices to any cheeses, roast them for 15 minutes at 250 degrees. Smells amazing. Once you've sanitized your herbs, need them to cool down because it gets kind of hot. I'm just gonna mix them all in. Dump them on the top, give a bit of a shake. Let's see them all the way down. And then I've got some local wine. This is Heritage Hascap from Northern Lights. Now, obviously, feta is a soft cheese. You can't store it in a marinade like wine for any length of time because that's not safe. It will marinate nicely and I can serve this. Oh, it smells amazing. Mm. So the cinnamon clove nutmeg that I've got in there mixed with the hascap berry, which is a very sort of boozy, purpley fruit berry kind of job. Perfect for Christmas. This is not a storage solution. This is a serving suggestion. The wine will have leached out some of the salt in the feta, which makes it more pleasant to eat, but also can leave it vulnerable to contaminants. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that. And now for a farm update. Are you helping with the repairs, Sarah Jane? <laughs> you can see Goat's Art is here guarding her area. She's the alpha, so she's in charge, unless I'm in the pen, in which case I'm in charge. Meanwhile, Daddy is also in the pen and she doesn't know who Daddy is. So she's trying to work out if she is supposed to be dominant to him or if she's supposed to be subservient to him as she would be to me. I like to kid myself. You don't get to attack daddy, it's not cool. He doesn't like it. Sarah Jane, please don't eat the wood. And you're teaching the babies too. So they're gonna start eating this new board while we're getting together the new new board to go on the outside because we're gonna sandwich the wood. Goat Salt has a habit of ramming new pieces of wood if you put them up. So if you just put it up from the outside, she will eventually come outside and ram it until it falls down and vice versa if you just do it from the inside. So I'm gonna do inside and outside, sandwich the whole wall and try and give it some structural integrity. Is she trouble? You trouble, Goat Salt. Everybody's decided we're going for a walk. Hopefully they will all return home once they see the bread that Catherine is carrying. Home time. Come on everybody, home time. Home time. Home time. It's not pretty, but it's warm and that's the point. Tastes of the unexpected. This was a competition run by Chiswick Cheese Market in the UK and this year it was won by James Grant of number two pound street and his winning pairing was Stitchelton blue cheese and ice cider from Devon. Uh, if you haven't tried blue cheese on a jammy dodger, do yourself a flavor. And finally, the taste test. 
So the holiday season is definitely here now. It's time to treat myself with a little of my favorite. Now this small piece is 99 grams and it cost me just under $5 American at uh, the Fresh Market in Idaho. This is Le Gruyere AOP 18 month reserve. You can see around the edge, the rind is a very different color to the paste and that penetrates probably a good centimeter easily. You can see these white spots, that's where the tyrosine crystals are. Tyrosine is those crunchy white crystals that you find on the inside of really well aged cheeses. This is an AOP cheese now. AOP means Appellation d'Origine Protégé, so protected designation of origin. This can only be made in a certain place to a certain process. Like the milk can't be milked more than 12.3 miles from the creamery where the cheese is made. That's the attention to detail that they give to maintain the quality of this product. So I tend to remove the darker pieces of the rind. If you're thinking to yourself that I'm not going to eat this entire stack, you're very wrong, my friend. Why is this one my favorite? Okay, I haven't tried all cheeses, so this one is my favorite so far. This one reminds me of when I was a kid, I was 17 or 18 years old, and I would travel from the UK through Switzerland and France and into Italy. I've traveled Italy extensively when I was younger and, oh, the snap on that. This cheese just reminds me of those super early mornings in Switzerland when you can't see the mountains because they're covered in fog and you maybe didn't bring enough Swiss francs with you to buy actual breakfast because you were like, you know, backpacking it uh, and ended up with a bar of milka and a chunk of Gruyere for breakfast. That is really, really good. There is a beef broth over note to this cheese, which makes it very similar to um, Holohoka which is a favorite of mine also. What I'm doing here is I'm warming some in my hand, just gives the flavor profile a bit of a jump start when you get it in your mouth. You then rub it across the roof of your mouth with your tongue, that coats your tongue with all of the flavor and you get that hit of instant grassiness, then the creaminess, then the caramel, caramelized onion kind of flavor, and then finally that overnote of broth, which is just dying down now. This is a very good length on it. It lasts, the flavor in your mouth lasts for a good long time. Mm. So why would you buy an AOP Gruyere over a supermarket Gruyere? So the whole reason behind protecting the name of a cheese like Gruyere is to make sure that knockoff versions don't flood the market. Now, unfortunately, knockoff versions of Gruyere are flooding the market and you can buy a perfectly serviceable Gruyere. If it doesn't say Le Gruyere AOP, then it's not the original Swiss version. And you might find that instead of getting your Coca-Cola, you're getting your store brand cola. It might be great. You might prefer it. It might be nice, but it isn't the real thing. So I would suggest if you have the opportunity to get a Le Gruyere AOP, especially if you can get one that's 18 months old, it's worth the money, trust me. This is just heavenly. I've tried lots of cheeses. This is my favorite so far. And now I want a milk or chocolate bar and a week in Northern Italy. Thank you for joining me for This Week in Cheese. See you next Wednesday. I have a new shirt out. I hate cheese. Just kidding. Can you imagine? If you fancy any of the merch that you find me wearing in my videos, uh, you can find that at tinyurl.com forward slash cnmerch23. Do you want some? No cheese for you. You don't have a mouth.